You know how mascot horror games are like, first set in a toy factory or a restaurant and then there ends up being a giant facility or something under the place? And people are kind of tired of that and think it's gone too far? Uh, well, personally, I don't think it's gone far enough. Massive facility that you walk around with some stupid gimmick device? No, that's boring. Enceladus? The sixth largest moon of fucking Saturn? Hell yeah! What do you mean, foamy this is ridiculous and will flop? I think you mean... Giant floating head boss fight? Fuck yeah! I think that modern mascot horror games all suck because they're afraid to deviate from that formula. I don't want a shitty gimmick toy if I'm dealing with some evil science experiment paranormal big bad enemy. Give me a fucking get and a couple of explosives or something. For Toying Spops 2, there is no get or explosives. No, 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 no. Those are for Toying Spops 3. But let me explain Toying Spops 2 a little bit. After many complaints about Twinks Pops 1, how it felt like a walking simulator, how the story made no sense, how people had no clue what to do, and were confused, despite the fact that there's literally text that tells you exactly what to do. Do you want some yellow paint showing exactly where to go or something? Do you want me to personally come to your house and play this shit for you? God. Ah, oh, damn. I took some of that feedback and implemented it into Twinks Pops 2. The story is significantly more batshit crazy, but also clear, so you know what's going on and you know, well, the story. I made sure to make the gameplay clear without holding the player's hand. And there are boss fights. And platforming. Now I know that platforming, you know, in mascot horror games, you're probably like, oh, this again, but I don't like it. But hold on. I knew with the fact that there is platforming in this game, I had to overhaul the movement system. This meant things like mantle and sliding. So I began to work on building these into the Twinks Pops 1 character. But I was having a difficult time since, well, I've never made these mechanics before. I got a working mantle prototype, but it was certainly rough around the edges, had a lot of bugs. Most tutorials on YouTube were no help. So an idea I had was to buy a player character from the Unreal Store that had all these and see how they implemented these features. Now most game developers hearing that know exactly how it turned out. It didn't fucking work. So just instead of spending a ton of time making my own blindly, keep in mind that this game was originally supposed to be a DLC for the first game. I, I didn't want to take a lot of time on it. I just went with the one I bought and modified it for Twinks Pops 2. Originally named as a DLC, Twinks Pops Isolation. Fun fact. Oh, it's a prepaid asset, asset flip game. Lazy Devet, suck my entire dick. I paid for it, I'm gonna use it. They're in the store for a reason. Plus, it cut back on dev time significantly, or at the very least allowed me to work on other parts of the game more since it already also had a pickup and throw mechanic built into the character. I added some stuff to the character for the game and removed some things that I didn't need in my case. Twinks Pops 1 taught me how to make games. Twinks Pops 2 taught me how to make games I feel happy with. I learned so much from working on this game that I'm going to take into whatever new games I make. I'm not saying every game is going to be Twinks Pops 2, but different. But the experience from implementing the feedback from the first game, the level design, creating bosses, and thousands of more under the hood things that I've learned from making this games will be the things that I take with me. Same with any feedback I get from it. I'm already with a new game, modifying the player character from the first game into working with that game and having all these new features. Because, well, I mean, to be fair, the character from Twinks Pops 1 was uh, pretty basic. But just from what I've learned from this game, now makes it easier to implement all those different things into new games. So, I'm happy with this game, not just because of the game, but because of what I've learned from it. Okay, enough of that. Let's get to when it will come out. April 26th. Okay, done. It'll be out on Steam, and it will cost three dollars. That's right! One loony and one toonie. Well, it's actually three dollars US, so that'll- uh. Well, it's actually three dollars US, so that'll be like... $3.89 Canadian or something. It's close enough. But for $3, you get the greatest mascot horror game ever made, and you support a game developer that's probably a little bit crazy. The link to the wishlist is down below. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, go fuck yourself.